I'm halfway gone Sleepless I'm battle worn And you're all I want Bring me the dawn I need the sun to break You've woken up my Hey, welcome to church. Thanks for joining us today. We're so glad that you're joining us each week. And hey, if this is your first time, a very special welcome to you. Stick around, God has something special for you today. If this is your first time, would you scan the QR code, head to our website. You can fill out the connect card. This helps us know a little bit more about who you are and how we can be praying for you. Go ahead and do that now. Here at One Church, we wanna reach the most people in the shortest time and our YouTube channel is helping us to do that. Welcome to all of our new subscribers. Thanks so much for being part of it. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that you like and subscribe and turn that notifications bell on to stay caught up with everything we have going on here at One Church. We continue to pray for one person to share God's love with every day. A great way to share God's love with someone right now is to invite them to service. Take a second and share the service link with somebody that God puts on your heart. Scripture reminds us that it is more blessed to give than to receive. You know, God blessed us by giving His Son, Jesus. First we give God our lives, and then we give out of our lives. Thank you so much for your continued generosity. Your giving changes lives. If you'd like to give at any time during our service, here are a few ways that you can do that. There's moments in my life where I forget to be grateful for all that God's done. You know, Jesus asked us to remember what he did. And we remember what Jesus did for us, his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And we do that in the time of communion. So gather what you'll need and let's be ready to share in that together. We're in our message series called Hi, My Name Is. And in this message series, we're going to unpack all the ways that God revealed himself through I am statements. Our memory verse is found in Exodus 3 verse 14. And it says this, and God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Before we hear the message, I wanna invite you to join us. We're gonna sing songs. We're gonna lift our voice. We're gonna open our hearts. We're gonna give all of our worship to the King. Come on, let's go.
died and he rose Those walls are rubble now
Hey, let me invite you to take a next step with Jesus today. Today is the day of salvation. Scan the QR code, head to the website. The Connect card will help you do that. You can join a group, you can volunteer, you can sign up to be baptized. Take a next step with Jesus today. God is doing great things here at One Church and he's doing great things all over the world. But here at One Church, we love to celebrate five awesome things that are going on in the life of our church. We do that in our high five. Check it out now. Coming in at number five, we are celebrating the two baptisms that our Franklin Outpost has experienced recently. Greg and Zeb, today this kingdom-sized high five goes out to each of you. We're so excited to see how God is gonna continue to move in your lives. Coming in at number four, this past Friday, our Manchester Outpost hosted a gathering for those in Open Roof. Open Roof is a group dedicated to those families and individuals with disabilities. On the first Friday of each month, Open Roof provides a place for caregivers and parents to come and fellowship together. So if you or someone that you know would benefit from being a part of this group, well then head on over to church.one slash groups and high five to more ways to connect like this. Here at number three is the fall semester of Rooted. It's well underway and groups have begun growing in what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Way to go, guys. This high five goes out to everybody in Rooted right now, growing strong roots in God's love. In at number two, this past week, our wise and wonderful group met in Manchester. They enjoyed a meal, they heard a word from Bo, and then they shared in a lesson on how to shop in healthier ways. You see, this group aims to provide people 55 and older with a place to build community, grow in faith, and be an encouragement to one another. So high five to all of those in Wise and Wonderful. And if you are interested in joining this group in its monthly gatherings, then go to church.one slash groups, and we hope to see you at the next one. And finally, up at number one, we are celebrating the many baptisms that took place at our Manchester Outpost recently. High five to Crystal, Joel, Nia, Jalen, Kylie, and Joshua. We are excited for how God will continue to work in and through your lives. Thank you for joining us for this high five. We look forward to celebrating with you in the next one. Rejection can be a brutal experience. I mean, you felt it. I, I felt it. Sometimes when we're experiencing rejection in the moment, it feels like the world is ending. I am dying inside. Sometimes when I get past rejection, I look back at the moment that I felt rejection. I'm like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Like I might have I overworked that moment a little bit. One moment for me was I was living at this apartment building. Heather and I were on the third floor. I met the guy that lived below me on the second floor. You know, complex living. We're, you know, shooting the breeze, talking. I'm into Jesus. I want the people I live near to be into Jesus. So I'm like, hey, man, like, you want to catch a Celtics game? You want to grab some food? Like, what's up? And he's like, oh, yeah, I'd love that. I don't know his name. I don't know his number. I know nothing about this guy other than that he lives right below me. So I see him come home from work one day, and I don't instant creep. You know, I, 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 I let him settle in. I give him 10 minutes and then I go down and I, I knock on the door. I'm like, oh man, hey, what's up? What are you doing? Celtics are on. You want to go grab food, grab a drink? What's good? And he's like, ah, I got I to gotta feed my cat. I, I can't. I can't hang out with you because I got more important things to do. I have to feed my cat. I was like, okay, I see you. I see what's happening. He slowly closes the door and I'm just standing there, rejected, right? Not feeling awesome. I walk up to the third floor, open my door. And it's like, how'd it go? I'm like, he's got to feed his cat. And more rejected. She's like, you are not cool at all. Like, you are not cool. But I, I, I mean, seriously, that's funny to talk about for me. I got, I got funny rejection stories, and then I have stories that I do not want to talk about because they still hurt. And if there's anything in our experience that I am convinced Jesus experiences, it's this feeling and experience of rejection. I mean, think about it with me for a moment. Jesus shows up and he's like, hi, my name is Jesus. This is who I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection in the life. I am the bread of life. And people are like, are you? 
I, 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 don't, I don't think you are. And they're talking to their friends and they're like, he's saying that, but I, I don't think he is. He's God. Like God came down to walk on earth and he's like, hi, I'm God. And people are like, I don't think so. It's amazing. And, and here's the thing. We are in this message series called Hi, My Name Is. We've been exploring the gospel of John because in the gospel of John, Jesus basically says, hi, my name is. But the way he says it, he says, I am dot, dot, dot. And when Jesus comes on the scene and he introduces himself to an individual or an audience and he says, I am dot, 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 he's making this bold claim that he is deity. The people he's talking to connect those dots. They know that. They know where he's going because they have a Jewish heritage. See, in Exodus chapter 4, God showed up to this man named Moses. Moses is an incredible figure in Jewish history. He's actually a person that God uses as a deliverer. But Moses' experiences have been one of rejection. Moses rejected the people that he grew up with because he wanted to opt with the people that were biologically his people. He was adopted by an Egyptian family and he grew up in royalty. He was in the family tree of Pharaoh, who is the king of Egypt. But he understands that he was born Hebrew and the Egyptians have the Hebrew under their thumb. And Moses is like, I don't want Egypt. I don't want power. I don't want riches. I don't want your religion. I want to be with my people. So Moses rejects Egypt, goes to the Hebrew people, and then they reject him. And they're like, we don't know you, bro. Get out of here. And, and when Moses is rejected, he finds himself in this wilderness place. And that's where God reveals himself to him. What I love about God is he's always trying to reveal himself to everybody. All of which, I mean, we've all been rejected in some degree. And he's like, I'm not the God that rejects. I'm the God that accepts. I'm the God that's for you. I love you, I want you, I pursue you. Relationally, I am drawn to you. There's no rejection in me. See, our, our memory verse for hi, my name is, is Exodus 3, verse 14. We're gonna have it on the screens, but would you read this out loud with me? At home, could you read this with me? It is wonderful to hear the word of God come out of our mouths. It reads like this. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. See, what Moses discovers is God doesn't reject him. And when he understands that God accepts him, he believes that he can do what God is asking him to do. And I really believe when we understand that we're not rejected, we are accepted that we can do what God can, is asking us to do. And one of the things that we're going to do in this life is we are going to face rejection, but we can face rejection differently when we know who we are. So when you know who you are, we can face rejection. In John chapter 18, we find ourselves in the Jesus story at the climax. Uh, Jesus is about to be arrested, apprehended, crucified the shadow of his destiny and fate. It's, it's, you can feel it in the air. And this is where we pick up. It says, when he finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches and lanterns and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, who is it that you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, I am he, Jesus said, and Judas the traitor was standing there with them. Again, the timestamp might be the moment where Jesus just longs for acceptance. And what he's feeling is alone, and what he's going to feel is rejection. Just prior to this moment, Jesus asked his friends to pray for him because he was having a very difficult time. 
Again, he, he knew what was coming. He knew what he was facing. He looked at his boys who had been like through all kinds of things with him. And he's like, can you guys just pray? And they're like, Jesus, we got you, right? We can pray. We're gonna stay here and pray. You go do your thing and pray. And Jesus went and prayed and he came back and his friends were sleeping. And he's like, guys, like, please, I need you. Like right now, I need you. I'm feeling alone. I'm feeling vulnerable. I'm feeling isolated. Like, I, I, I need you. Can you be here? And they're like, yes, we got you. And, and then Jesus went away again and he came back and they're sleeping again. Now, I, I don't want to criticize. I have heavy eyes. I know what it's like. Heather's like, can we talk? And I'm like, yes. And then I'm like, and she's like, no, no. And I'm like, heavy eyes is a real thing. I'm not hating on these guys. But you know what? Heavy eyes can communicate rejection. Jesus is experiencing something uh, that, that we will experience in, in his heart. Because he's experienced it, it goes, his heart goes out to us in really sweet ways. When, when Judas leads um, Jesus's, or when Judas leads this detachment of, I don't know, army to Jesus. Uh, he's like, hey, who are you looking for? I love, I love Jesus. He just steps out of the garden. He knows they're coming. And he's like, hey, who are you guys looking for? And they're like, we're looking for Jesus from Nazareth. And, and even this language, biblically, is so hostile and so filled with rejection. I mean, they could have been like, we're looking for Jesus, the wine guy. You know what I mean? We, we heard there's this guy that turns water to wine. We're, we're looking for him. Or we, we, we could look for Jesus, the guy that raised the dead guy. Jesus, the guy that feeds the army, that guy. And they're like, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the guy from the broke downtown where no one's educated and no one has income and is forgotten about and everybody from there talks funny. What the army is trying to say is you are not God. Right? The, the rejection level, again, is so high. We're looking for Jesus from Nazareth. You are not God. Man, it blows my mind. And when he looks at the army, he doesn't just see strangers. He sees a friend. Right? He sees Judas. And, and Judas was a, in close proximity to Jesus, like Judas had like the credit card. Judas uh, had all the money that people were given to Jesus to support what he was doing. Judas was working that. And Judas had some funky stuff in his soul. And when money came in, he's like, all right, I'm just gonna take a little bit. And, and I think what Judas experienced is in me taking something, in a way I'm rejecting Jesus. And when I reject Jesus, it's only natural that Jesus is going to reject me because when I reject people, they reject me back. Does that make sense? When I reject people, they reject people. It's a vicious cycle. So if Judas rejects Jesus, he thinks that Jesus is going to reject him. And what it does is it just creates more and more rejection. Jesus doesn't love me. Jesus doesn't want me. Jesus doesn't, like he's not into me. He knows me and he knows me and he doesn't want me. And, and now I find myself, instead of being with Jesus, I'm with them. Like I'm with the army that's coming after Jesus because I don't know who I am. Because I don't know that I'm loved and I don't know that I'm accepted and I don't know that I'm wanted. And when I don't know this, what I've experienced in my life is I find myself doing things that reject Jesus because I think Jesus is going to reject me. My friends, Jesus was rejected so that I could be accepted. The whole story we're looking at is that Jesus gives himself up for rejection so that I will always be accepted. I need to know that. I want you to know that. See, when we know who we are, we can face rejection. And when we know who we are, we can finish our mission. So often when I experience rejection, I want to react instead of respond. 
So if I'm hurt, if I'm embarrassed, if I'm slighted, if I'm overlooked, if I experience any of these things, I could process this and be like, all right, Jesus, you know what this feels like. And when you felt that, you loved. And when you felt like that, you didn't reject, but you responded and, and you were honest and you were loving and you were truthful. And I want that. But often when I experience rejection, I react. And when I react again, I'll reject someone else and they'll react and they'll reject someone else. And that's not what we're trying to accomplish. See, we're literally trying to accomplish the mission that God has for us. And that mission that all of us have, that you have at home, that mission that we have is to tell the world that God accepts us in Jesus, is to tell everybody that we're not rejected, that we're wanted, that we're loved, that Jesus was rejected on our behalf. But when I'm responding to rejection with rejection, I'm taking my eyes off that mission and I'm not living out what God has asked me to live out. So here's the thing. One way to help me remedy feeling rejected is to pray for one. That's it. Like pray for one is so helpful and so multifaceted that when I begin my day saying, God, would you give me one person to share your love with? He might ask me to share my, his love with the person that's rejecting me. And when I want to reject them, it might be, no, I, I want to love them. Pray for one sounds like this. God, please give me one person to share your love with. Would you pray that prayer with me? God, would you please give me one person to share your love with? In my head, the guy that lived on the second floor, he's cat guy. That's, that's how, that's in my head, he'll forever be cat guy, right? Cat guy. And he's watching right now. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, he, he, he's cat guy. And so years went by. I didn't think about it. I got a dog. I like going to the dog park. Uh, I meet cat guy, which is kind of funny to see cat guy at the dog park. Um, but one day I'm talking to this guy and I'm like, man, he looks familiar. I know the face. I know the voice. I know you from somewhere. And you, if you know me, you're like, I'm just going to be like, bro, where do I know you from? I know you. We cross paths. And he's like, did you live there? And I'm like, cat guy, right? And, uh, and, and you know what I didn't do? Because you know what came back in that moment? The door closed and walking up the stairs like a loser. I was like, all right, cat guy. Like I did not live out the mission that God had for me. I, I let rejection win. And I don't want rejection to win. And rejection doesn't have to win because rejection doesn't win with Jesus. Look at this. John 18, 6, when Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words that he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those that you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Wild. I'll never forget the first time I read this passage. And it said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And he's like, I am he. And they fell down. And I was like, what am I reading? Like what, like, what is, like, what is this? And it was almost more, who is this? Who is this? What, like, what power? What authority? And I don't know. I wasn't there. I can't spell it out. But I know they got clubs and lanterns and torches. And they're rolling deep. And Jesus is in a garden with like a handful of people. And he's like, I'm that guy. I am. And they just fell on the ground. It's Jesus. See, Jesus blows my mind. He's everything. And some things that we see just in this paragraph is that Jesus is in control. If he's like, I am he, and they're like, we're on the ground, this communicates to my soul that Jesus is in control. 
Everything about this story tells that Jesus is in control. The reason Jesus is in a garden where Judas knows where he's going to be at, the garden that Jesus has prayed with Judas time and time again, Judas is like, hey, I think I know where he's going to be. If I know Jesus and I do know Jesus, this is where he's going to be at. Jesus isn't hiding. He's there. He's making himself available and he's saying, I am. There's so many times in the Bible where it says that people wanted to apprehend Jesus prior to this moment. And it said he would just walk away. People that were hired and trained to apprehend people, this was their job. Jesus would just be like, I'm just, I'm just going to walk by. He's in control. This is his moment. This is his I am. This is God being rejected so that I could be accepted. Jesus is about others. Some, some scholars think that Jesus said, I am he, so that people didn't look at John and be like, all right, you're Jesus, you're coming with me. And people didn't look at Peter like, all right, you're Jesus, you're coming with me. He's like, I am Jesus, let everyone else go. If you're looking for me, take me. Don't, don't drag them down with me. Jesus is about others. This whole moment is Jesus submitting to rejection because I should be rejected. We should be rejected. We should be rejected. And we're not. And I'm not. And you are not. Because of Jesus, he's about others. Yeah, it's good. trying to smile. I haven't been smiling as much as I would like to. It's a tough text, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> Jesus is out for peace. I mean, think about Peter. I was talking about this with a buddy. Like, I've, I've beautified this to like, Peter was like, I cut your ear off. You, you know what I mean? Dude's trying to lop a head off. Right, dude is like, that's, that's what I'm talking about because of Jesus. <laughs> like, don't touch him. Get your hands off of him. And Jesus is like, I'm giving my hands to them. Peter, put your sword away. Like, this, isn't, this is not what we're doing. It, Jesus is out for peace. And the way that Jesus brought peace for me and brought peace for us is by being rejected so that I can be accepted. And when I know that I'm accepted, I can finish my mission the same way that Jesus knew he was accepted and he could finish his mission. So when we know who we are, when we know we're accepted, do we know that? I wanna ask you, like, do you know that you're accepted? I don't know if I can know who I really am without knowing who I am in the sight of God. I've been created by God. I am deeply loved by God. I am loved by my mom. I am loved by my family. I am deeply loved by God. He knows me. He loves me. He accepts me. And when I know that, I can follow Jesus. This is the continuation. John 18, verse 12. Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and they brought him first to Ananias, who was the father-in-law, I'm uh, sorry, father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. 
verse 17, you aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I am not. I don't know how to handle my rejection in terms of what I do to others. I don't know how to handle my rejection and what happens in terms to me. But Jesus was faced with a mob and he said, who are you? And he's like, I am he. Peter, I don't know, 15 year old girl, maybe opening the door for people. You're not one of his disciples too, are you? I'm not. My heart for Peter, it's, I know that feeling. I know that feeling. I mean, Peter is isolated from his friends. He's isolated from Jesus. He's all by himself. He's face to face, all alone, or seemingly so. Hey, who are you with? Not him. What we come to discover in the story of Jesus is that we're never alone. We're never alone. I know we might feel alone. We might feel alone at work. We might feel alone in class. We might feel alone on our team. We might feel alone on our, like, in our neighborhood, in our family. We, we might feel alone. We are never alone. Because the one that was rejected on our behalf never rejects us, and he is with us always. I'm looking at Peter, and I'm like, bro, good for you for even being there. You know what I'm saying? Like, they took Jesus in cuffs. I'm probably going home. And Peter's like, I'm not going home. Like, that's my guy, and I'm with him, and I love him, and I'm for him, and I know he loves me, and he's with me, and he's for me. But push came to shove. And he failed. And push comes to shove. And I fail. See, there's an incredible difference between Peter and Judas. For, for Judas, his rejection of Jesus continued to create space. Because again, he, he, he was not convinced in his soul that Jesus loves him and is for him and accepts him. He thought Jesus would reject him. So when he rejected Jesus, if the podium is Jesus, uh, Jesus is going to reject me and it's going to cause me to fail again. And I'm going to reject Jesus and he's going to reject me and I'm going to fail again. Peter will come to discover no matter how many times he rejects Jesus, Jesus is never going to reject him. Yeah. And it's out of that identity and it's out of that acceptance that Peter's like, I am with you. What's happened in my life, hopefully, and what's happening in your life, hopefully, is when we understand that we are accepted, that Jesus will not reject me, that I follow, that I love more, that I live more, that I live out God's mission for me more, that I can face rejection more because the one that could reject me doesn't. He accepts me and I love him. And when I love him and he loves me, my life begins to look like him. I begin to speak like him. I begin to love like him. That did not happen for me when I thought, when I rejected Jesus, Jesus rejected me. I want to invite us in to this beautiful idea that Jesus was rejected so that I can be accepted. And I want that to be our identity. As many times as I have failed, what Jesus did in this moment would take me to the cross. It's bigger than anything I've ever done or not done. If you're here, if you're here, 
And you're like, I don't think Jesus accepts me. I'm telling you, what Jesus did on the cross for us, what he experienced, brings our acceptance. And I want us to believe that. So as we think about Jesus' rejection, I want this to be the thing that lets me know that I know that I know that I am loved. We looked at John 18. I would really love for everyone to look at John 19 and John 20. I don't know if you can do it tomorrow. I don't know if you can do it the next day, the next day. But please, over the next couple days, look at John 18, John 19, and John 20. It's the beauty of the gospel in Jesus saying, I am yours and you are mine. We have this wafer. This represents the body of Jesus. As we hold this, we remember that we are not rejected. Jesus gave himself for us. He says yes to us. If we are saying yes to Jesus, please take this with me. This cup. Yeah. doesn't matter who we are or what we've done, even what's been done to us. We are not rejected. We are accepted because of Jesus. Jesus says yes to us. If you're saying yes to him, would you please take this with me? I'd love to pray a blessing. Please pray with me. Jesus, Thank you. Thank you that you know what we feel. Thank you that you know what we face. Thank you that you walk with us. Jesus, I thank you that you were rejected so that we could be accepted. Help us know you and help us love you. Help us have a relationship with you. God, thank you for accepting us. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life So break every stronghold Shine through the shadows Jesus.
out Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus Jesus said, I am, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the bread of life. Jesus is everything that we need. He is the way to the Father. What good news we heard today. Our YouTube channel is helping us reach the most people in the shortest time. Thank you so much for subscribing. Make sure that you like and turn that notifications bell on to stay caught up with everything we have going on here at One Church. Here are a few ways that you can give. Thank you so much for your continued generosity. Your giving changes lives. I'm so glad that you joined us today. If this was your first time, thank you for sticking around. We hope to see you back here real soon. Continue to pray for one person to share God's love with every day. And from all of us here at One Church, have a good one.